What's up guys, Zoom here, and on today's video, I'm gonna be bringing you guys my Kastira deck profile for the February slash March 2024 format. This deck is an awesome choice if you're wanting to play Rogue, if you don't wanna play Fire or pay for Fire, which I 100% understand. And that's why we're doing this deck profile. Uh, you could definitely get some regional invites to nationals. You could probably get away with maybe a regional top or two with this deck too. And on top of that, if you're taking this deck to locals, you'll definitely do pretty good if you know what you're doing. So without further ado, let's get into the deck profile. So to start it off, we do play triple Castera Unicorn. Unicorn is pretty much the heart and soul of the deck. Uh, this allows you to search for spells, go into combos, and just, you know, keep going. Uh, so you definitely got to play this card at three. Um, the other three LV play is Triple Rise Heart. Uh, this card can allow you to extend and still utilize your extra deck um, as far as links go. Uh, so this card is really cool. A lot of people play this at like two or one. I like it at three because I like seeing more Kastira names. Um, because seeing names is very important in this deck in my opinion. Uh, then we do play Triple Kastira Fenrir. Uh, Fenrir is another card that's very important in the deck. Um, this card allows you to search a unicorn or any other Kastira card. And it gives you interaction with your opponent. Uh, so your opponent has to deal with this card if this card is on your board. And it's also a instant out to SP Little Knight if that is on the board. So this card is definitely needed at three. Um, and then for the last Castira monster we play, we play one scare called Castira. Uh, the reason I don't play Ogre or like any of the traps is because I personally feel like those other slots should be used towards hand traps. Um, if, especially if you're playing a lot of fire or a lot of, you know, meta decks. Uh, because against fire, in my opinion, you need at minimum two hand traps in order to actually affect that deck. If you don't have those two hand traps, you're in a really bad position. Uh, so that's why I played one scare called Castera, and I don't play Ogre or any of the traps or anything like that. I just feel like that's the best route to go. Uh, and that's it for Castera Monsters. Let's go ahead, get, speaking of hand traps, let's get in two hand traps. So I do play triple dimensional shifter. Uh, obviously a lot of people are going to give you a lot of hate for playing dimensional shifter uh but d shifter is kind of one of the only counters to this fire meta um and the good news about this deck is even if you don't see this card at all you can still win that duel because this deck has a lot of fire power behind it now that's all i really have to say about d shifter d shifter is d shifter your opponent can't use their graveyard you can't also but you don't care in this deck you actually want your stuff banned then we play triple ghost bell again my main focus is fire but ghost bell hits more things than just fire ghost bell is great against voices voice or any other deck that summons or uses utilizes the graveyard um and if you time your ghost bell perfectly against fire you'll probably stop their turn because they're not going to expect it to be in your actual main deck most people side this deck now some people might expect it to be in your main deck it all depends but if you use this card at the right point in time against fire now that all depends on what they've done so far what board they've built what cards you know they have your knowledge everything it depends on what card you hit uh, but a great hit is probably always flame burst dragon um, and then princess is a great hit also um, so it all just depends on what the game state is and what you know they have and where they're at. Uh, and then I do play triple draw and lockbird. Now, draw and lockbird is it kind of conflicts with dimensional shifter. So if you open this and dimensional shifter, obviously 90% of the time you're going to de shifter instead of waiting to activate draw. Um, but if you're playing like a deck against Flunderese, um, this card just shuts them down. A lot of people are still on Flunderese. Uh, this card can also shut down Voiceless and it can shut down the Mirror depending on their hand. Uh, so that's why I still play this card. And like I said, you need multiple interaction against Snake Eyes, Fire Kings. Um, and if you don't open Shifter, you have this. Uh, you can de you can activate Draw, and then maybe you'll have you'll probably have another interaction in your hand for that matchup to slow them down and get even more. 
Uh, and then speaking of more interactions, we do play triple um, Ash Blossom Joy Spring. Um, Ash is one of those cards where if you do it in the wrong place and they have more extension, you, you just gave them a free extender. So you got to be kind of very careful of Ash when you're playing against Snake Eye. Um, but Ash is just so good of a hand trap that you just kind of have to keep it in your deck. You can't take this card out. Uh, and then we do play triple impermanence to round up the hand traps. This is one of the better hand traps in this format. Uh, you have to play impermanence. Uh, it, especially if your opponent builds their full board. Say this is the only hand trap in your hand and you're just kind of scared uh snake eyes opens a hand and they do a, a play where you know they have more extenders in their hand or they can keep going you're gonna want to hold this and it's not gonna be much but at least you can hit their flame bird so they can't ip masquerade you and and they go into appaloosa or sp little knight so at least you have one less interaction you're gonna deal with um but yeah Imperm is really, really good. Uh, and then as far as Ghost Bell, if you you could swap Ghost Bell out for like a Fake Veilers or Ghost Mourners, which Ghost Mourner is really, really good. Uh, this format, you, you can swap Bell out if you're not very comfortable pain decking that. It's just me and my play testing. I feel like Bell is amazing. Uh, but yeah, that's it for hand traps. As far as spells, we do play triple, I mean, double triple tactics talent. Uh, this is one of the best cards this format. Uh, everybody in their mama is running hand traps so they can try and stop the Snake Eyes deck. Um, and when they hand trap you, you can rip a card at their hand, take their monster, do whatever you want to do. Um, so yeah, Talents is really, really good. And then we have Pot of Prosperity. Now, you have to play this card because Castiria does break at times. So weird, oddly enough, people know that already. Um, but it conflicts with a combo we play in an extra deck, the Link Spider G Golem combo into Deco Talker. So you can't go into that combo if you play Prosperity, but that's okay because you'd rather your deck be more consistent than relying on that draw combo. Uh, and then we play Triple Pressure Planet and one Terraforming. So we play four field spells. Um, you gotta play this card at three uh, as a extra layer of consistency and the terraforming just allows you to get this now be aware if you have a hand that that you could play and you don't need this card and you have a terraforming in your hand don't play in the draw just just play your hand out and then terraform at at the end of like your main combo that way if they have a draw you'll still be okay uh, and then I do play triple theosis uh, a lot of people play two uh, my theory of playing three is that if i open one cast monster um, i would like a theosis to pair of it other than anything else um, just in case i get a fake veiler and perm ash blossom i would love to have this card just in case they have an interaction i only open one cast monster um, so that's why i played three and then obviously the last card the deck is at 40 cards by the way we play triple catch tier birth now unicorn is a heart and soul to deck but this is also the heart and soul to deck if this card was gone you wouldn't be able to really play this deck uh birth allows you to normal summon level seven allows you to special summon allows you to just otk your opponent under five summons and that's it for the main deck and let's get into the extra deck. So we do play As IP Mascarena and SP Little Knight. Uh, now, IP Mascarena's only target is SP Little Knight, but it's great to end on an IP Mascarena if you can, because you can just interrupt your opponent's combo with SP Little Knight. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And then we do play the G Golem combo. So we do play Double Link Spider, one G Golem, and one D Cold Talker. Uh, so this is the full combo. At the end of this video, well, at the end of the profile, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the combo really fast. Uh, and maybe I'll do a full combo video if you guys request it. But yeah, uh, I decided this package just cause, you know, drawing two cards is pretty nice. And for XYZs, we play Draco Sack. Uh, Draco Sack is part of the G Golem combo. 
Um, and then we do play one Harmonizer. This card is good for interaction with your opponent's graveyard. Um, and it's good Zeus father, really. Um, and then we play one Shangri Era, one Dark Armed, one Big Eye. Um, Big Eye, it doesn't come up too much, but when it does, it's, it's busted. And then Dark Arm, you'll summon this card a lot. You'll also summon Sangri Ira a lot, believe it or not, just because, like, it's generic XC to go into. Um, and then you can just get your, you know, your Fenrir's and stuff back. Um, and then we do play one Flare Metal. Now, this card is an amazing card for time. Uh, my biggest thing with this card, though, is I'm debating siding this card and maybe putting in a main deck Appaloosa. And the reason I'm saying that is because when you do this G Golem combo, if you activate it, you know, Pot of Prosperity that turn, you can't go into Deco Talker. But I can go into a three material Appaloosa, you know? So that's something to really think about and debate. But for now, it is Flare Metal in this spot. Uh, and then we do play one Typhoon and his brother Zeus. Um, you can go into Zeus really easy. Typhoon allows you to steal games that you just shouldn't be winning. <laughs> and then, obviously, for those hands where you open a level 7 and an effect and a, and a uh, Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, you can go into Baron A. Sometimes that's just enough if you have a pair to something else. Uh, so let me go ahead and show you guys this G Golem combo. Um, and there's multiple ways you can get into this combo, but... I'll just show you guys the birth. All you need is a birth and a Fenrir. So, special summon Fenrir, Fenrir effect. This allows you to search. We'll just search a unicorn. Uh, you'll activate birth. Birth allows you to normal summon without tributing. So, normal summon unicorn, unicorn effect. This will give you a Deosis. You'll exceed summon into Draco Sack. Use Draco Sack effect. You want to discard Fenrir here. Um, you'll get two tokens. Uh, I don't have. Uh, do I have anything for tokens? Yeah. You'll get two tokens. Uh, you want to put your Draco Sack in this zone. By the way, I'm just doing this really fast. You don't want to get you know Anima or whatever. Uh, so here, you'll link off into a Link Spider. Where did I put it? Right here. So yeah, you'll link off into a Link Spider, and then you'll link this off, and you'll go into a Link Spider again, and then you'll link both the Link Spiders off into a G Golem, and then your G Golem is effect. It's a special summon your Link Spider, and then from here, you'll do that, and you can go into a Deco Talker, and I'll allow you to draw. But what I was talking about with Appaloosa is you'll get to this point and then you'll Link Spider. And then what you could do from here is you could just go into a Appaloosa. So that's something to think about. Well, I hope you guys liked and enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to leave a like and some comments down below. My name is Zoom. Peace.